Welcome to the Surrendered Strength Radio. As Christian men, we are called to surrender our lives to Jesus. To surrender to Jesus means to give in, not to give up. We are called to use our strengths, abilities, and opportunities to grow and prosper. We are called to strengthen ourselves, our families, and our communities. We are called to encourage and lift up our brothers in Christ. We are called to honor and glorify God in all things. To surrender our strengths, we must live to a higher standard. We must live with strength, courage, and honor. To love God and to love others as ourselves. This is Surrendered Strength. What's up, men? Welcome back to another episode of the Surrendered Strength Radio. I am glad to have you here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to encourage you to go to the link on my Instagram page and get signed up for our five-day challenge where we are going to be diving into our identity, our purpose, God's purpose for us, and our strengths, our physical, our mental, and spiritual strengths, the, the strengths and abilities that God has given us. And we are going to we're going to dive into them and really get an understanding of, of what, what God is calling us to do and how we are called to, to live out God's will. And, and how we can best honor God. So again, go to my Instagram page, which is surrender.strength, and click on the link and get signed up so we can get started. That is going to be June 11th through the 15th. Five days. It, it's going to require about an hour and a half of your time, maybe a little bit more outside of our, our Zoom meetings. But for the most part, it's going to be the Zoom meeting, and, and I'm going to encourage you to, you know, take some time to, to think about what we're, what we're discussing. But for the most part, it's going to be an hour and, uh, or an hour to hour and a half, and we're going, to, we're going to dive in to that topic. And secondly, I encourage you guys to, to rate, lend, re- leave a review on Apple Podcasts. So we can get this out and share, share, you know, God's will for, for men with every man. So with that, we have David Saluka, I believe I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, but David Saluka is joining me today and he is a, a son, husband and father first, as he says, but he's also a writer an author, a speaker and an editor. And he, he is uh, helping helping other Christians with with their writing. He has an e course that um, I'll have to get a link to later or put it in the show notes. But he has an e course where you can you know just connect with him and get some information on how you can write an e course. And I'm sure we're going to talk more about that as we get into today's episode. So with that, today we have David Saluka. David, I originally met you through Instagram, mm-hmm. through the Mail to Men uh, page or account, however, however you call it. And you know what? What really got me interested in, in what you were posting is just the difference between being a male versus being a man and specifically, you know, a Christian man. And, you know, I think the uh, big, big uh, differences is, you know, as a man, we have, we have a, an identity and B, we have a, a set of rules, commandments, you know, that we, that we live by. Tell, Tell me more about, you know, how male to, a man came to be? Well, I have a 15 year old. I have uh, four children. Uh, I have three girls and a boy. My girls are 21, 22, 23, and my son is 15. And one of the things that I had been sharing with him um, 
and being my son is as he's gotten older, I said, just uh, mat a mature male body does not make yourself, does not make you a man. And as I began to think around those things, uh, especially as, or just reflecting on my own growth, I realized, uh, I just started thinking about, okay, when did I think I was a man? How much do I feel like a man now? How much in my life do I exemplify godly man traits, the fruit of the spirit in my life. For example, uh, my wife, will, she used to kid when we got married, she said, no, I need a, I need a man. I do not need a junior high boy. Yeah. Cause it's still, I mean, it's fun to be playful and joke around. I still do that. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with being childlike, but there's a difference between being childlike and childish. And so I think uh, a lot of this came out of things that I was sharing with my son. And uh, I think every many children have a hard time hearing things from moms and dads. And um, so I just thought, you know, I'm going to share this with some other guys that as well, that um, are, are younger and just uh, even some men my own age and looking at um, the traits, the things that we all fight as men, uh, you could call it your flesh. You could call it um, the, your, yourself, your old nature, you know, some of these things. And uh and I just began to take a look at traits and mindsets that um, just different ways of thinking and how and not just only different ways of thinking, certain kinds of behaviors and how they affect how they affect my, my daily life, my interactions with, with, with my wife or my children or at work. Um, I used to work. Uh, I, I used to work in I used to develop some what do you call them? Um, like for human resources, um, performance development guides. Okay. And in those, we would have a rubric. And in that rubric, it, you, it would say, for example, for a company value of excellence, uh, when I used to work with companies and how they would, how they would rate their employees, um, instead of just saying, we have the value of excellence, please rate yourself. Uh, I realized that very quickly that everyone has a different idea of what excellence looks like. I remember my first year of college, my roommate and I, we had, we both of the sides of our rooms were clean, but they looked different because we had different moms or we had different expectations for ourselves. And so I began to think of uh, for male and for, for what it means, for what it means to be a male and what it means to be a man, I began to say, well, why not take a look at some of these behaviors and mindsets and define them? Because then we can really, look at biblically, what does it mean to be a man? And uh, it was uh, revealing when, if I write in, in writing or in having discussions with other, uh, with other friends or males, men in my friend group, or just some of the guys that I talk with, um, it was revealing when I, you write something that a behavior, what happens, well, I guess it falls more on the male side than on the man side. Right. So that's how it came about is just wanting to identify specific things versus thinking we all know what it means right. and assume that we are men simply because we are, we've, we've aged or we can grow facial hair or because we're no longer growing or because we have a deep voice. Uh, and I think um, there are plenty of men or plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, males who have aged <laughs> who, uh, who are still very much 15 year olds in their emotions. Uh, you know, uh, addictions do that. Uh, had a lot of conversations with uh, my son and others around addictions and how addictions really stunt your maturity. And so you can have, you know, men, men in their male, in their bodies who, um, who are still very immature in their emotions and their mindsets and in their behaviors right. and struggle because they haven't challenged themselves. So it was a long answer to just simply say, I just felt it was helpful to define the difference because it began to put fingers on behaviors and, and attitudes and mindsets that really should change if we want to grow closer and become more like Christ. That, that was a, it was a great answer. Um, and you are absolutely right. You know, I, I would say for my personal experience, it wasn't until I, you know, really a decided to, to follow Christ and to, you know, to be a Christian. And it wasn't until you know, shortly after that, that I realized the same thing that you were just explaining that, you know, there is a difference between being a male and being a man. And, you know, at, at the beginning of 
of my journey, I was still being a male, but saying I was, was a Christian. And it wasn't until I really dove into, you know, what, what God calls us to be as, as a man that I decided, realized the, the difference. And, you know, in my, in my, um, full-time job, I used to work at a school and I worked with elementary to middle-aged students. And then I went and now I work, I currently work at a prison. So anywhere from 20 to, you know, we have 80, probably around 80 year old. And the crazy thing is that the attitudes of a lot of the elementary and, and uh, middle school kids were very similar to the the people in the prison or the men in the prison. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's been people that they've asked, me, oh, you know, what's it like? And I'm like, kind of like working at the school. <laughs> kind of the same. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it's crazy to yeah. to uh, kind of experience that. But it is it is so true that you know we can get older but that doesn't mean we're getting wiser no, or, true. or really maturing. One of the things that I've uh, thought about in the area of maturing as a recovering perfectionist, someone who grew up um, really trying to perform and to please other people, uh, fairly compliant child and you know that kind of a thing. And yep. thankfully the Lord's helping me with that because that's just as much of a problem as something else. But I realize that it's not, it's not even so much about the becoming of something as it is the journey, as it is saying, God, I know that these things are in my life. I don't want them here. Uh, I need you to move in my life. And I yield and humble myself before you and trust that you can conform my image into your image. And so a part of being a man doesn't necessarily mean the absence of male traits because we always have them, but it's the awareness of them and the humility to deal with them when the Holy Spirit points them out to us. Right. Absolutely. And, and I know this past, this past two weeks for me, I've, I've realized, or, you know, God has shown that I've been trying to do a lot with my own might instead of, you know, just allowing him to, to move in my life. And it is, it is one of the, one of the traits that I think, uh, I think I wrote it down that you mentioned, you know, we're not necessarily trying to be self-sufficient, but we're, we're um, realizing that we are incomplete without God and we need God in our lives. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, there's, I wanted to point out a couple of other, on your Instagram page, you have the, the kind of the difference between a male and a man. And, and so that was one, the self-sufficient versus being incomplete without God. Another one is, you know, as we, for instance, as we pray, we're asking for God or we're asking God for stuff. And that's what a, a male would do. And, and I am guilty of that for sure. And the being a man is pursuing a personal relationship with God. Would you like to uh, talk about that? Yeah. I mean, those who, those, the earliest people who are called Christians, Christ, the Christian was actually not a compliment. It was, it was those who were followers of Christ or little Christs. And so it was even just a bit of a derogative term that people took, you know, to label those who followed Christ. And so being a Christian is not necessarily what you believe as it is who you're following. And I think there's, there's something, um, as I look at polls and such, and you say, well, you know, how many Christians, I think 75% of Americans would call themselves Christians. But it's very clear that that number is a whole lot lower of those who truly follow the teachings and the person of Jesus Christ. Right. And so I think that being, being a follower of Jesus, I just lost my train of thought. Tell me your question one more time. I was going somewhere and I, I derailed myself. That's all right. So just to kind of elaborate on the difference between asking God for stuff there we go. and pursuing that personal relationship. Yeah. So I think, I mean, one is obviously um, any parent would know that if they're the only time their kid comes to them is when they want something, it's not much of a relationship. Right. 
Uh, it's a bit like Santa Claus, or to be even more dramatic, this is what uh, this is what happens in prostitution. You end up just you end up asking for some, you know, you end up using a person for your own for your own pleasure and for your own good, and you're not interested in any kind of relationship. And and I think that can happen sometimes, sadly. Yeah. And and yet, the true walk of a Christian is one who has fellowship with Christ. I love John 15. It talks about abiding in Christ and the mixture of how our love for him and our response to him, that love and obedience together create this abiding relationship. And out of that abiding relationship, fruit is born and we have much joy. And I think that's really the essence of being a Christian is having love for Christ and out of that love responding to him, which produces an abiding communion with him, which that is what produces the fruit of whatever the Lord desires in our life. And, uh, and, and out of that, in John 15, again, then it says, you can ask of me and I'll give you what, you know, I'll give you what you ask for. There is, and you, so that your joy will be full, but it's born out of, um, it's born out of a personal relationship uh, with God. I think God's very gracious. He doesn't mind us asking. I think he loves when we ask. Um, but I think there's a difference between, um, trying to manipulate God for our own selfish means versus asking because he's put it on our heart, asking because we genuinely have a need and recognize that he can, he, he's the person to meet that need, but not wanting just what God can give us. It's a combination of, of that relationship we have with him combined with his provision for us. There's a phrase in some, in some circles that talk about, we seek God's face and not his hand. Um, I think you can do both. I think that God wants both. He wants a personal relationship with us. And he also wants to cooperate with us for the kingdom's sake. And that involves asking and that involves partnership. Um, so I think uh, the difference between that male and man in that area of prayer is just maintaining that connection, that personal connection and personal relationship with God. And in that context, we're free to ask. Right. And you you uh, make a very good point then in terms of the relationship in that we can, we can go to our father and really ask, you know, I've been, I've been reading in second Samuel the past uh, few days and, and just watching or, you know, reading David's conversation with God. And he asks specific, specific things and God answers him in specific ways you know he answers answers him in in you know to help him and it's not you know david's not you know he wasn't asking for for a big kingdom or this or that he was asking you know god what what should i do and it's it's crazy that uh we we overlook that as you know as men as as christians in general we overlook that that conversation that we can have because because you know it's it's a real conversation that we can have and and um, a, a, a image that I've been kind of uh, told in the past kind of going along with this topic is the vending machine God hmm. I'm sure you've heard it but where people you know go to God as if he's a vending machine just to you know get stuff where realistically it's it's a relationship that we can have and it's a open communication or open conversation when my kids were a bit younger i remember um one of them having challenges in their life and i say well let's pray and of course in the moody frustration that prayer doesn't work and i said then you don't understand what prayer is prayer is not the vending machine god say well this vending machine doesn't work you know right or the lottery doesn't work it said prayer is, is simply communion with God and abiding with him and sharing our heart and knowing his heart. And in that context, I don't know, that relationship appealing and sharing our desires and casting our cares upon him and seeing how he works things out for our good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one other one that I want to talk about when we're talking about, well, and we actually kind of talked about this one already, but you know, older males who act like boys, you know, they're mature physically, but not emotionally, spiritually, mentally. 
um, verses, as you put, a man isn't about, or being a man isn't about being perfect, but having a heart set towards manhood. So, like I said, we kind of talked about this, but give me an, give me maybe an example or, or elaborate on that heart set towards manhood and what that kind of looks like. Yeah. I think when we become overly confident or just think everything's okay, let's just take a marriage, for example. Um, sometimes people say, I get together with some friends. Hey, how's your marriage going? I say, well, you, you have to ask my wife. I'm the wrong person to ask how something's going because really how it's going is she, you should ask her or if a woman, one of her girlfriends want to ask her, how's your marriage going? They should ask me. And I think I try to keep that in mind with my own spiritual walk is that maybe it'd be good to ask my friends and maybe it'd be good to ask my children or a spouse or, or others, because we, we, I think we misjudge ourselves. We typically think more highly of ourselves than we should, or sometimes we think more lowly of ourselves than we should. We're really looking for what's God's perspective and how can we walk with him and his, as we walk with him and the, the journey of being conformed into his image, there's, and, and walking by the spirit, we, we live in a culture that can consistently bombards us. Um, and we are, we get so much influence from the world that just even to counter it takes more than a quick little devotion. Uh, if you think about, uh, if you just walk, if I go and sit and have uh, coffee in a caribou or a Starbucks or something like that, my daughter works at caribou coffee and she walks out and she walks in and she smells like coffee and she didn't drink it but she smells like it because she was in that aroma. And, you, and, and so it's very much like that in the world is that um, just to be able to um, live in the world, uh, we have to counteract that with how we feed ourselves and how we continue to grow. So I would say the difference between being a male and a man in the area of, of spiritual growth is just understanding that uh, is to have a hunger, not just to stay the same. Not to be deceived that everything's okay when a marriage is falling apart or our kids are struggling or people are struggling around us and God's called us to make a difference. I think it's that hungering and thirsting after righteousness that, that Jesus talked about um, in Matthew that causes just that continued desire for growth. I think if we're not growing, if we are not growing, we are falling away. And um, so I just think part of being a man is recognizing that we are on a journey, um, being okay, realizing that that's the, yes, we're a part of being humble, recognize we always have things to learn, uh, learn from other people, having people in front in, in our lives. I think it's good to have someone older than us, someone the same age and someone younger than us. And so that it continues to help us to, to grow, to help, uh, to receive, to share and to mentor. I think is um, is very helpful just to maintain that teaching. So, kind of answered your question in a variety of ways, but I just I just think that to recognize that we're on a journey, and the male just says I've arrived and I'm happy with how I am, and the man says I want to grow, I want to be better, um, not just so I can be better and be proud, but to realize that I'm on a journey and my life matters and I'm here for a purpose and I'm married for a purpose and I'm a father for a purpose I'm I'm an employee for a purpose I'm a neighbor for a purpose. And God wants um, to, you know, the Holy Spirit in me wants to move through me and, and wants to continue for me to, um, to walk with him to make a difference in the world that we're in. And so I, I mature, I liken it this way. If you think of, a, of a, a window, you don't clean the window so that you can look at the cleanliness of the window. You clean the window so you can peer through what's in the outside. And I think that's the way the issue with holiness or Christ-likeness. You don't become Christ-like or pursue Christ-like so you can be Christ-like. It's we grow to be like him so we can be effective through, you know, he can be effective through us. And, um, you know, the pursuit of holiness, the pursuit of maturity, that's not the end because all that does is make us arrogant. We become a Pharisee. But the pursuit of Christ's likeness, the pursuit of, of, of this wanting to be a man of God, wanting to grow is, 
so we can uh, walk with God and we can fulfill his calling upon our lives because each of us matters in this world. And uh, there's plenty of things that can get in the way of that. And the Lord wants to eliminate those things and strengthen other things so we can uh, really truly be fulfilled in what he's called us to do. Right. And, and you, you made a good point, the, the pursuit of holiness, that that pursuit, is, you know, how, how we actually live out our faith is is extremely important in that pursuit because you know i was i was reading it the other day and and you know if a say for example me me as a father you know get mad and angry at my children and cuss and swear in front of them <clears throat> excuse me all the time but then we load up go to church every sunday you know what am i really teaching and how am I really living out my faith? You know, it's it's not that's not a very very good picture of, of what Jesus or how Jesus actually lived. It's you know more maybe more more the Pharisee where you know in behind closed doors we are we are you know one way, but when we get out in public we act a different way. So much of being a man is what you do every single day, your daily surrender. This is what it means to follow Jesus, that we deny ourselves, we surrender, we take up our cross, we serve, and we follow. And that's tr a truly a mark of someone who wants to follow God. And the opposite of that, a male is happy with where he's at and doesn't see any need for improvement. It does things for self and is not willing to sacrifice things. Other people should serve him. And uh, the world's full of people like this. I'm sure you see it when you go to work. Oh, yeah. And uh, instead of realizing that my life, I'm, I'm here to serve. And that involves sacrifice. And I'm secure in my identity in Christ. And I serve like he did. And yet I'm still completely strong. It doesn't mean I'm walked on, but it means that I serve with the strength that he's given to me. Right. Um, Absolutely. And I think, I think there's, a, there's a big misconception there uh, where, you know, if, when we or if we surrender our life to Christ, all of a sudden we, we lose what, what we have, or we lose what we can do. But in reality, it's, we're not losing what we can do. We're losing what actually controls us and allowing, we allow God to, to move us. That's true. Well stated. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's, let's switch gears a little bit. Now you are a a writer, author, speaker, editor, and on your on your Instagram page, your personal Instagram page, you have a link to to a writing e course. And I clicked on it, you know, just doing some a little more research on on who you are, and something popped out, and it was God has entrusted you with a message. Now. I've always uh, believed and, and have been trying to convey the message that you know God has called us to do something, to use our strengths to to do you know whatever whatever that is, you know whether it's our, our physical, our mental, our spiritual strength. So let's talk about you know the message that God has has put in in our hearts as as men and how we can how we can share that with the world. Yeah. Yeah. I do believe, I think most people have a message. I think some people should be quiet and learn. Uh, I would say that again, the difference between male and man is you have someone who's just completely mature and talks and talks and talks and talks and just likes to hear himself speak. And I think it's time for that person to be quiet for a while and learn and to learn to listen and to allow his heart to be shaped. I do think that a man who embarks on this journey toward manhood uh, humbly, um, as he sees God working in his life, I think that's when that message begins to form. And I think any wins that a man has in this journey of death to self, alive to Christ, as Paul talks about, I think that's worth being shared. Um, what it says when, it, in other words, for it is our testimony. Uh, I love the passage in Revelation that talks about how, um, you know, more in the, the end of the age, it says, and they overcame 
by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives even unto death. Well, the blood of the lamb is something we receive for ourselves. We didn't do that. But the, the word of our testimony is something that we can affect. And our willingness to lay our lives down is something that we can choose. And I think that when we share the word of our testimony of the spirit of God working in our lives and seeing God move and work, when we share that, when I share that with you, it says, wait a second, if God did that for him, he can do that for me. And I think that's that message that is so encouraging for other people. This is why I believe the writer of Hebrews said, don't forsake the gathering you know, together. Uh, is because we need community. We need to hear what God is doing in our midst. Uh, it keeps us on track. It keeps us biblical. It keeps us accountable. Uh, get off by ourselves. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you, you look at history, church history of even uh, certain major moves of God. You have leaders that get off on their theology because they weren't didn't have other people around them and uh, did not have the testimony and the work of God around them. So, I think I, I do believe that um, God has given those who choose to grow in Christ a testimony and something to share. Now, how many people they get to share that with? It's kind of up to them. It's it's up to the the platform that God provides for them. But we all have a platform, and we all can share what God's doing, and that is encouraging for other people to know that there is a God who made them. He has a purpose for their lives, and uh, He wants a relationship with them. And, um, and as they embark in that relationship, they, will, they can come into the fullness of why God created them. So I do believe the power of testimony is, is absolutely essential for growth. And without it, we have less hope. We have less encouragement. We have less faith. And uh, we don't know what's possible if all we do is we see what we, what we can do in and of our own strength. When we start to hear other people's testimonies or when you share your testimony, you begin to encourage others that uh, God is real and he moves and works. And you can, in the same way God broke through for me, he can break through for you as well in your situation. Absolutely. And, and you know, just sharing, not only sharing my testimony, but um, just trying to have or plant seeds and have eternal conversations yeah. has been something that I've, I've been working harder at or, you know, trying to do more because I realized that that was a, a piece to, to my journey or to the puzzle of my, um, whatever you want to call it, a piece that I was missing, you know, it's, it's great that I became a Christian, but like you said, if we're not sharing, you know, what God is doing in our lives, you know, we're not going to be impacting other people. So I definitely, I, I definitely agree that we have a message and it doesn't have to be, I don't think it has to be a, a big elaborate, you know, no. message where, and, and like you said, also the platform is going to be different for everyone. You know, right now, currently I'm just talking to people at work, you know, when I have time to have a conversation and, or ask, ask a question. Yeah. Um, but you know, another way that I've, you know, trying to do that is through, through the uh, social media, you know, kind of the same way we connected, you know, I think the question was, you know, what is, what is God calling you to recently or something along those lines? And, you know, just, I think planting that seed of, you know, okay, God is, God is calling me towards something, you know, maybe I should take some, take some time to you know, pause and, and figure that out. Mm -hmm. And, and yes, that is it. It all comes back to the message that, you know, once we figure out what God is calling us to, we need to start sharing that. Yeah. That message can take on so many different forms. A lot of times people think that that message is just sharing the gospel, but that message can be, Hey, I really am grateful that you, Hey, I love your Love the beard, very nicely shaped. <laughs> um, right. It can be uh, really love that outfit. Thanks for your help on that project. Uh, you know what? I'm so grateful that you're here. You make a difference in this company. Right. Uh, and whether it be those little nudges of encouragement and of hope, or whether it be just being available, there's so many different, different ways that the Holy Spirit nudges us to be a light. And that is the message. I love that, uh, that scripture where Jesus says, 
you know, he talks about himself being the light of the world, but then he says, you are a light of the world. You're like a city set on the hill that can't be hid. And uh, just allowing light to shine um, in whatever manner is unique to that man. Um, light can take many different forms and it has much different impact if we're simply willing to shine it and to share whatever God puts in our heart at the moment. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I think you said it, said it best there. And, um, we're, we're running out of time for, for the amount that, that, uh, zoom has given me. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to just give us the, the final word and also let people know where, where they can connect with you. And I know you have, uh, you a couple i don't know how many books exactly but a couple books that um you've written that you know let's let people know where they can find those as well so just give us a final word and and let's uh let people know where they can connect with you yeah i i think my final word is um jesus is worth the pursuit and the holy spirit is the very very best partner and, and friend to help us in that pursuit. And i um, so grateful for the Holy Spirit and his work in my life and how I can commune with the Godhead. And I'm so grateful for that. And uh, life is a pursuit. And if we're not pursuing, then I would suggest that we're probably digressing just by means of the world that we live in. Um, I just continue to share thoughts at the mail to man. I do have a personal Instagram that I open up to friends. Uh, so if I, if I know the person or have had contact, I'll accept, but that's why my personal one has just been private just to, uh, to do that with my family. But mail to man is where I share a lot of these thoughts. Um, and uh, working in the editor editing industry, I've written books on how to write, how to write books um, and how to share devotional writing. So if you look at David Sluka uh, in, in Amazon or at Amazon, at amazon.com, you'll see some of those books pop up. Um, but uh, overall, I just want to be an encouragement to other people and help them continue to grow in their relationship with the Lord. Awesome. Thank you, David. And you are, you're you know, definitely an encouragement to me. So I appreciate you know all your all you're putting out on Instagram and, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to join me and I will put those or put links on the, uh, the podcast show notes so people can connect with you and, and, uh, you know, I hope we uh, can stay in touch and yeah, that would be great. I really appreciate you reaching out and I'm, I'm, I too am encouraged by uh, what you're sharing on Instagram. So thanks as well. We each do our part, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, what's in your hand. I right. love that. I love that story from Jesus is what's in your hand. He takes what's in our hand. And that's really all that we have to offer is right. just to whatever he's put in our hand. So thanks for being faithful with that. It's encouraging many people. Thank you. I appreciate that. David, you have a great night and uh, we will be in touch. Sounds great. Great pleasure to meet with you tonight. Thank you, man. That was David Sluka. And what that was a, a great conversation again. The, the one of the best things about doing this podcast is having great conversations with with men who are strengthening and encouraging other men to honor God. So I appreciate David jumping on and and taking taking his his time and joining us. And I will put the links for for um, David and his books and ways you can contact him in the show notes. So please you know, get in touch with him. Again, he's got a few books. He's got a, a how to write e-course. So um, check him out. And men, I will echo what, what he has said, what David has said. God has entrusted you with the message. You know, we have, we have been given a, a will and a purpose that God has put in our hearts. He has given us a calling. He has given us strengths and abilities to use to, to honor him. So I encourage you to do that and to share your message. You know, where, where we came from and how we got to this point and, and how God is 
using us to to carry out his will that's our message so i encourage you to share that message and and again just as david said it doesn't have to be anything elaborate you know like jesus didn't do fancy we don't need to be fancy just honor honor god by loving other people encouraging other people with what you have and what god has given you so with that men i thank you for for stopping by again and just pray that you are continually strengthened and encouraged to honor god every day thanks for listening to the surrendered strength radio connect with me at surrenderedstrength.com be sure to share this podcast with other brothers in christ family and friends until next time remain strong courageous and honorable loving god and loving others as yourself Yeah.